It makes logical sense that during a fast, you're breaking down protein, which would lead us to believe that, well, we're breaking down protein, it means we're breaking down muscle. Well, we are, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. Okay, there's some really interesting research, and in science, in the human body, you have to look at things through a macro perspective. You can't be tunnel vision with stuff. So one would look at muscle protein breakdown and they'd think that automatically means that muscle is getting broken down and vanishing into thin air. So let's kick off this video with a couple of really quick studies. I'm not gonna go into exquisite detail with them. I just wanna lay them out so we have research out the way and then we can start talking a little bit more logic and what's probably happening. But first, I do ask you hit that red subscribe button. This is the internet's leading intermittent fasting channel. You won't be disappointed. And then please hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. All this stuff is informational purposes only. Fasting can be extreme sometimes. I'm not a doctor. I'm just some dude on the internet. I've lost about 100 pounds and I enjoy biochemistry. This first study was published in the European Society for Endocrinology. Okay, it took a look at 72 hour fasts and it wanted to investigate what the net protein breakdown was like. Okay, well, no surprise, they found that during a 72 hour fast, there was a big increase in net protein breakdown, which means that somewhere in the body, protein is being broken down. But they also found that mTOR was turned way down. Now, to give you perspective, mTOR is what we call the anabolic switch. mTOR is uh, like the big overall master switch that tells the body, yes, you're in building mode, or no, you are not. So mTOR was deactivated or reduced. However, when they look at other genes and other situations like FOXO3, there wasn't really a change. So what this tells us is that the muscle protein breakdown was a result of mTOR being deactivated or downregulated, not because there was a protein deprivation. Now, I know that's gobbledygook, so let me just kind of just circumnavigate it, make it clear. Basically, what that means is, yes, protein breakdown was elevated, but only because muscle building was turned off, not because there was a, quote, need for protein as fuel. Okay, now here's another study that was published in PLOS1. Okay, it found that the phosphorylation of mTOR was downregulated by about 50% throughout a fast. Again, no surprise. That just tells us right then and there, mTOR is turned down. However, they also found that autophagic markers, autophagy, was upregulated over 30%. So let me again give you context here. Muscle protein breakdown increased because mTOR turned down, but autophagy went up. That implies that those proteins that were broken down from the muscle were actually used via the autophagy pathway to build something else up. So it doesn't mean that we just magically excreted this protein and it just disappeared. It means that that protein was broken down from muscles and it was used somewhere else. Okay, we'll explain more about this because it actually could lead to even better muscle growth, okay, in way of higher quality muscle. So just stay tuned on that part. So it's important that we know that muscle protein breakdown is crucial. Okay, in fact, if you look at mice that have been engineered to not ever break down muscle protein, they are markedly weaker. Why? Because muscle protein breakdown is what ultimately is the later stimulus for muscle protein synthesis. If we don't break down, we don't rebuild. So during a fast, your body is taking broken down weaker parts of the muscle putting them somewhere else, and then later on when you eat, it's going to repair that part that it broke down. You're not losing muscle, it's not going away. Okay, as long as your refeeding strategy is appropriate, you're gonna actually build higher quality, more than likely denser muscle. So essentially, when we see that autophagy increases during a fast, that is like the superhero that's taking the protein that's broken down and putting it somewhere else. I want you to think of it like this. It's like a dysfunctional Robin Hood, okay? So your body has this Robin Hood that sees that there are muscle proteins in your muscle itself that are just kind of dysfunctional, not doing their job very well. They're just poor members of society. So Robin Hood goes in and he takes those proteins and he says, hey, you don't deserve this job. And he gives them to other areas of the body that have potential that maybe just need a little extra protein, a little extra manpower. So maybe he's giving them to the skin or the intestines or the hair or the collagen, right? Okay, now that doesn't mean that the muscle protein that's in the muscle is just gone for good. The moment that you refeed, the moment that you eat, as long as you're consuming enough meat or enough protein, those proteins from what you ate are going to repair what was stolen. So you're never going to have an impetus or a catalyst to repair what was stolen from Robin Hood 
unless you get rid of it in the first place and refeed with good quality meat. I will go ahead and note, if you want to have a good refeeding strategy, I recommend ButcherBox. Okay, they're an online meat delivery service. I use them all the time. Super high quality meat, super high quality grass-fed, grass-finished beef delivered right to your doorstep and honestly, super convenient. That's why I use them so much. So highly, highly recommend it. So lean ground beef, lean steaks, filet mignons. We've got uh, fish, we've got sockeye salmon. They've got all kinds of good stuff. They've got bison now for members. It's great. So. Check them out down below, special link down below in the description. Please do check out ButcherBox down below. You won't regret it. So now you've refed in a proper way, your muscles are satiated, right? And you never really had that net protein breakdown overall unless you end up not eating enough during your eating window. So I always recommend, yes, make sure your calories are up. Make sure you're eating enough during your eating window. Okay, fasting isn't all about a caloric deficit. It's about reallocation and meal timing and time-restricted feeding, but still getting the same calories in. So one thing to consider also, if you need a little bit extra push, why would your body preferentially use muscle for fuel during a fast when it has plenty of fat to use? Fat yields nine calories per gram, protein yields four. Show me any economic reason, as far as your body's concerned, that it would want to use muscle versus fat, when fat is just there to go and all the genetic pathways are there, the gene expression, the activation is there to utilize that fat. Okay? It makes way more sense for it to use fat. And then I want to coin some stuff from Peter Atia. Okay, Peter Atia is highly respected regarded in the fasting community. He's a great MD that knows a lot in this category. I've done some work with him. Okay? So he talks about how during a fast, your body's utilizing fats, which means you have more ketones being elevated. Well, ketones are muscle sparing because they spare leucine. Okay, so leucine is largely um, an activator of mTOR. It's very anabolic, it helps muscles grow. So if you're in a fasted state, Peter suggests that yes, globally from a large perspective, mTOR levels are turned down, which means that in a global view, your body is in much more of a catabolic state than a muscle building state. But that doesn't mean that it's localized. So what I mean by that is, yes, mTOR is turned down, but at the muscular level, you actually have a muscle sparing effect because leucine is high. So just because mTOR is down doesn't mean that it's down in the muscle. And if you're giving yourself a little bit of a stimulus to be able to create new muscle by lifting some weights during a fasted period, you can actually activate mTOR at the muscle level while keeping autophagy high at other levels. It's not just a master switch. There are secondary switches as well. So that means that we could have the potential during a fast to activate protein synthesis in such a way that when we break our fast, we build very quality muscle. I encourage you, take a look at people that frequently fast. And I just, this is anecdotal and this is kind of just outcome based, I suppose. Take a look at most of the people that practice intermittent fasting and also lift weights. You'll notice their muscle is denser, generally speaking. They're usually very strong. They usually have good muscle bellies. They usually have very fibrous looking muscle. The point is higher quality muscle and they usually have less injuries to boot, although that's purely anecdotal and I do talk to a lot of people and think that I know what I'm talking about in that category, but feel free to prove me wrong. Anyhow, I highly recommend that you watch this video one or two times and really let this soak in. I'm gonna do a follow-up video where I talk specifically about the fasted forms of training that actually can help benefit this whole process to begin with. Don't forget to check out ButcherBox down below and also please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. See you tomorrow.